Uh, Shay family, this is Armand Rose. Hey man, y'all have. I hope y'all had a great week. Enjoy y'all weekend coming up. Um, <clears throat> just want to talk about something real quick. I know we've always spoke on the things that's going on in the world. I always speak on things going on in the world. Um, but I want to talk about moving forward. I want to talk about things that are connected, and it's all connected, family. I want you guys to understand this. This is something that's been in my head for about two years now. Everything is connected. Everything. Everything is tied to something that's tied to something that's tied to something. Everything is connected, family. I want you guys to get that through your head. Um, so I'm going to connect the dots for you guys a little bit, okay? Um, and you guys know when I when I do these videos, it's strictly strictly for my black audience um and i'm not and listen to me i'm not talking about white pastors i'm not talking about uh white anything i'm talking about black pastors and i'm talking about black pimps okay i'm talking about pimps and pastors today pimps and preachers today you know um and like i said everything is connected um I was just watching Buck Buck Breaking, and um, about two weeks ago, and then I started reading it once again about the sex slaves, um, the sex slave farms that they had, <clears throat> and just I know I've talked about this before, so it's probably you know some of you guys have heard this, but the pastors and the pimps, the pastors and the pimps, both, you know, and I've always told you guys. When you do studies, don't start don't start with slavery. Go past slavery, okay? But these two particular characters are created during slavery. Go back. You don't find no pimps before uh, before slavery. If you 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 have madams, you have houses, you have dwellings, you have certain things. You don't have a pimp. You don't have a you don't you don't have a pimp. You don't have a black pastor before slavery. You might have a bishop or something like that that was over there, but once you once you do your research and you find out what those bishops did and what they were just evil people in that same system, okay? But what we know, what we call pimps and pastors, did not exist until slavery, and it was a those two characters are a way to control. Um, keep us in keep keep our people in servitude when it comes to certain things okay um of course you know to go real deep with that I, we we can say mentally slaves are the pastors physical slaves are the pimps okay you get it you you, you see the connection right this is not going to be you don't have to you know I um I, I, this is a song I like by Missy Elliott and For Real is on there and he said you don't have to be a mason to see some of these lines you know now I, don't, I think I got it right he said you don't you don't have to be a mason to see some something you don't have to be a mason to see some of these lines I think that's what he says but guys you don't have to be a mason to to, to be able to connect these dots this shit is not that difficult I told you guys excuse me. I've told you guys, I'm a C average student. All you got to do is be focused on something. It don't have to be this particular topic and just read. If you don't understand it, break each sentence, break each word of the sentence down till you get a clear understanding of what they're talking about. And it might be differently than what you think it is. It might be totally opposite of what you think it is. That's why I tell people, read the Bible. I want you out of the Bible. But hell, to get out of something, you got to dive into it. So, you know, we, we always want to uplift these pastors and these freaking pimps. And they are the scum of the community. They are the scum of the community. They are, the, they are, they are one in the same. Okay? They are one in the same. They are there for feel-good results. Your preacher is there 
to, to a facade of a feel-good result. Okay? The, the, the pastor is there to make you feel good on Sunday. Give, you know, you give him his, uh, your money and you go on about your way. The pimp is there to provide you with a feel-good service. You give him your money and, and you go on about your way. Um, they're also very involved in trafficking. We're not going to talk about just sex trafficking. We're going to talk about just trafficking. Moving women from place to place, town to town. And once again, I've showed you guys, and this is what I don't understand, how you guys don't want to do your own research. I showed you guys all the preachers that's been, all the churches and organizations that's been arrested for trafficking females and boys. Let's be real. These, these, these dudes is, 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 is on both sides of the coin. And, you know, most pimps sample their own product. Most pimps sample their own products. They don't want, you know, as a junior pimp, you you probably breaking a girl in before, you know, anybody else touches her. You're going to you're going to you're going to get her acclimated to what can happen in a situation. Pastors do the same thing. How many times you going and the pastor's fucking half the congregation? He's fucking half the church. He's fucking the boys. He's fucking the girls. He's fucking everybody. How many times? They're the same creature. They're the same disgusting creature. Now, back to the trafficking thing. I've told you guys several times with this trafficking going on, there's certain things that, you know, we walk around in broad daylight and we will not question things that we see. You'll never question a cop car. With, with a girl in it or a cop van with a girl in it. You'll never question that. You'll never question um, a, a church bus with girls in it driving down the street. You'll never, you'll never question it. You see it time and time and time again. It, it will never pop into your mind. What the fuck are they doing? Where the fuck are they going? Today ain't even Sunday. We don't even think like that, but we have proof that this shit happens and we continuously overlook the true people that are causing damage to our community. Going back, the pastor and the pimp. Um, what else can I say about both of them? What I mean, if you look at both of them, they're, they're the flashiest person in the, in the organization. Um, they are the ones in control of the money. W what other similarities do you want? Um, when I grew up, only two people had nice cars in the community. That was the pimp. That was the pastor. Okay. Drugs wasn't, you know, I'm from the South. So drug dealers didn't have it big. You know, I'm not from New York. I'm not from Baltimore. You know, I'm not from California where their stories growing up in the seventies and eighties, they saw dope dealers with the nice cars. I didn't see that. I saw pimps and pastors with the nice cars. Okay? You, you're a player, you're a pimp, you're a pastor growing up in uh, Louisiana and back and forth from Louisiana to Texas. Definitely in Texas, I saw all the pimps with, with nice cars. Okay? Um, what, other, what, what other similarities do they have? Whatever you want to, whatever you want to talk about, um, most pimps, um, most of the older school pimps, they were trained with the gift of gab. Pastor. Pastor has, thick as this book is, uh, I used to have a Bible too right here, but thick as the Bible is, the pastor might have 12 sermons that he gives that he has perfected, that he is good at, that he can spit and is fire every time. And y'all will go there 20 years and listen to the same 12 sermons and never question nothing that this man says because it's a feel-good story. It's a feel-good story. He may add a little trip to Vegas and little or a little a situation he helped somebody with to the story. Other than that, it's the same goddamn story every year. And you won't question it because it, it sounds good. That's why I told you guys, I don't think I could be a motivational speaker because... I'm not that, you know, I, 
I'm talking to you. I want you to learn. Yes, but I'm not that fiery person. I'm not Malcolm X. I'm not Martin Luther King Jr. I don't have that. I don't have that that speaking factor that these guys have. These guys are talking bullshit. And you guys love them. Why? Because they have that speaking factor. They can talk about pastors. Listen to me, family. Pastors and preachers are the dirtiest people on the planet. They have the gift of gab to talk about selling your body and selling your soul to Satan. Listen, the Christian community, the God of your book is the devil. I've shown it to you. I've proved it. You cannot prove me wrong. But the pastor keeps perpetuating that this is a good God. The pastor mouthpiece is so good that he has convinced you to come to church every Sunday and give him your money and you serve in the devil. Pimps. What woman? What woman? What woman? Thinks that that's a good idea. That, hey, you know, I'm going to go out there and sell my body. Take a chance of catching any type of venereal disease. I, and, and, and you know, the condom can break. Anything can happen. Dude could kill you. Anything can happen. I'm going to choose that lifestyle because this dude has convinced me that this is the way to go. They're the same pieces of shit. They're the same scum. They're the same motherfuckers that has the, tore down the community left and right. But we, for some reason, keep uplifting them. We keep uplifting them. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And and I'll be I'll be the first one to sit up here and say yes. When I was in the book club and I read um Iceberg Slim's books, I was infatuated. I was like, oh shit. But what are you doing? <clears throat> you're taking the very you're taking the very backbone of our community and doing what to it. And then she goes to church to try to get some redemption, and now this motherfucker trying to stick his dick in her. Come on, man. Some of the dirtiest people on the planet that you know are pastors. Some of the dirtiest people that you know on this planet are pastors. Some of the nicest people that you know on this planet are pimps. See, the pimp wanted you to love them. The pimp wanted you to love them, so they did do things in the community. They did buy people's buy people groceries and 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 and, and do certain things like that in the neighborhood, and vice versa with the with the pastor. He didn't do that. He spoke on that, but in the back, like I said, behind the scenes, he's screwing your wife, he's screwing your daughter, he's uh, turning your little boy out. Y'all seen that? Y'all seen that thing about uh, Aretha Franklin's daddy? Now it's allegedly that Aretha Franklin's first two boys are, uh, are from him. This man had this man had sex orgies with just men, no women involved, just men, sex orgies. Then he had a sex orgy for just the women. Then he had sex orgies with couples. This and, and I'm pretty sure it, it went, you know, children and things like that. I'm pretty sure it kept going because these motherfuckers are perverted. They're perverted. Okay? So you know these things about these people and you keep going and giving your money to these people. I don't understand it. And you know the craziest thing about it out here, man? I've had the pleasure to sit down and talk to some young pimps out here in Vegas. I've had the pleasure. And the game has changed. You know, the, the, these guys, and I told them, I say, man, now, I say, mind you, I understand you have, you're looking at this as a, as a financial opportunity. I say, but let me ask you a question. What if I did the same thing to your mama or your sister? Now, I'm talking to millennial, millennials right now. These cats are unstable and they're, they're very emotional. And he kind of looked at me like, you know, I saw him struggle with the uh, with with the words, right? And because 
because he looked at me with some intensity, right? He kind of looked at me like, what the fuck? And then he was like, well, you know, it, 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 the, 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 the protective brother in him for about 30 seconds was at the front. Then these bullshit books and these bullshit women that have taught him what he learned because he learned this from a woman. He didn't learn this from a man. He said, well, if that's what they want to do, who am I? I said, that 30 seconds, that person that you struggle with, that's who you are. He said, what do you mean? I said, I said, when I first asked you that question, I said, you frowned up. And you looked at me very intensely like, like I would kill you. Like you would kill me. I said, you see that? I said, do you remember that intensity that you looked at? That first 30 seconds after I asked you that question. That's the real you. This is a facade. That's the real man that you should be. I said, you're fighting with that. I said, you're struggling with that. He said, but that don't make me money. I said, well, when you realize money isn't everything, that's the man that you should be. That's the man that, that needs to come to the forefront. And let me tell you all something, family. Without us being exploited, we need to start being the, the protectors. We need to start being, you know, more in depth and in tune with ourselves versus giving somebody else uh, uh, accolades for tearing our community down. Now, I'm done with the pimps and preachers thing. I hope you get it. I hope it, I hope it sparks somebody to go research. I want to talk about this real quick. $43 billion, over $43 billion in the last 30 years of records the black church has received. Um, my donation page right now has still received zero dollars. I told you guys I have a plan. I told you guys about the plan. And I think that, you know, if you made it this far in this video, you're probably going to be the you probably need to be the one to implement this. Doesn't like I said, I've always been open to to the ideas, but here's the idea, family: you have to create a bank, okay? And I'm not saying bank as a financial institute. I'm talking about a bank to create money, a source of revenue, because. You can't have a community try to feed these people without having some money behind you. The donation page is just a startup. It's not a continuation of we need money, we need money, we need money. No. The bank, the idea, the bank, the um, I'm sorry, the donation page, when you get the money, you got to build a casino. You got to build a casino resort. The the casino resorts on native uh, reservations make $3.1 billion annually. Go look it up. They make $3.1 billion annually. Go look it up. $3.1 billion <laughs> annually. Go look it up. Um, that's what the $100 million is for. If we can get that, if we can get that, if we can get that, if we can get that money, it wouldn't take that much, but that's the that's the goal is to say, hey, we got to buy this land. We're going to build a beautiful casino resort. We're gonna, we want to have everybody come here. We want to have all the weddings here. We want to have the HBCUs here. We want to try to to turn these Greek art, uh, organizations into African organizations. We want to try to make implement everything we can. And with three point one billion behind us, we can do it. We want to go out and buy up the blocks. We want to go. And, and create a grocery, a chain of grocery stores or convenience stores or whatever the case may be. How about starting our own oil refinery? How about that? And from there, we go and start our own gas line. And then from there, we go open up our own um, convenience stores. Okay? The possibilities are endless. And the, 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 the most important thing from that is we start our own community. You know, if you want to live, if you want to, if you want to stay living where you're not wanted, where you hate it, where you can get choked out, 
where you can get kneeled on, where you can get sold and prostituted and 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 um and, and trafficked. That's on you. It's on you. Well, the, our protection only lies on our land and property. Listen to me. Our protection only land, only is provided on our land. Okay? We ain't going to be able to ride out to somebody's courthouse and gonna get everybody killed. They'll look at it as a terrorist act. But on our land, with complete sovereignty, we can do what we want to do. Okay? Because right now, the game is not to try to conform these people to say treat us better the game is not to try to 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 adapt to their culture we, we've done that for 400 years and it still is what a man that, that speaks up about the injustice of us could get ostracized a man that says you know hey man um please get off of me you know i can't breathe is killed in front of us and we don't do nothing we don't react no type of way. Our women are missing by the droves. Our children are coming up missing by the by the droves. And here it is, we do nothing, we look for nothing, but we're going to keep on trying to be indoctrinated in the same system that if you kill somebody, you get 150 years and that same the same incident happen and that person get 6 months. You you don't see the tyranny that we face. So it's not about joining, it's about leaving. It's about separation. We have to leave, we have to separate. We have to separate. We have to separate, fend for ourselves, protect ourselves, and the only way we can do that is with a bank. Like I said, I'm not talking about a financial institution, I'm talking about a money generator. That's the hotel casino. From there, we can create all our chapters, whatever you want to do, and we can go achieve those things. We got to buy more land for agriculture. We got to buy more land for farming. We got to buy more land for the, for the neighborhood and, and the community. And we can go into these docile places and buy up housing and stuff like that. So now we're into real estate. We're into everything. And we can make, we can generate more money. The $3.1 will be five billion if we really buy up if we just go around and buy up homes and buildings and and uh abandoned uh hotels and stuff like that we, we would be oh man unstoppable unstoppable vegas if we had that money we had the bank going we had the resort going we had this money and we want to buy up something and we want to be able to take care of our people here in vegas you got both fiestas are closed. You got the palms that are closed. That's closed. You got the Texas station that is closed. So which one would you want to buy to make ours to turn it into something where we employ our own people, where we take care of our own people? We couldn't do that. See, this this is the this is the this is the idea of separation. The separation has to be the bank controlling us financially so we can be able to do something like that i'm pretty sure uh it ain't gonna put no dent in that three billion dollars to buy the fiesta or the texas and we have a nice place but y'all can do what y'all want to do we can we can set it up as a, a chapter in the corporation and find a president and run it do you do you because I don't know, man. I, I see it as a as as the only way. As the only way. It's the only way we're gonna be able to do something. We gotta we gotta put our money first and foremost. We gotta pull pull our money together to something like this. And so, like I said, somebody on here, because I don't think it's gonna be me. Like I told you, I think it'll be forty years before I got the monies together. But for you young people that's on here, this is the way. It has to be done truthfully. And as you see a true person is saying, you know what, I want to separate from these people. I want I want to pre create a, a land and a safe haven for us so that we have our own sovereign state. And these people are scared. Are scared. 
And, and you know, the, the, the crazy thing about it is don't wait. You know, and that's what I'm saying. It's going to happen when it's too late. It's going to happen when everybody's going to jump on this bandwagon right here when they shut down the banks or they they close all the black people's accounts or they fire all the black people and, and, and just make them. They're going to do something to you guys to make you turn to each other to say, hey, we have to help each other. And by that time, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. You're going to have to suffer and endure a whole bunch of bullshit just like we've done any era. In any era of, 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 of the land of this world being in existence, the common black man and woman has suffered. Pay attention. It's coming. All right. Hey, man, I know this went long, but hopefully you guys understand what I'm talking about when it comes to, you know, uplifting these clowns in the community and the pastor and the pimp are the same person. They're the same person. They're the same dirty dick dog motherfucker. Okay. Hotel.